Let's look at a troubleshooting example with IPv6 access control list. And while we're doing that, we're gonna have the ability to learn and see which show commands we can utilize for verification purposes. So what's the scenario we're dealing with here? The scenario says that our telnet to the server from PC1 is not working. So we're gonna have to investigate what the problem is. We have a feeling that it's related to IPv6 access control list. So we're gonna to go to our branch router first. And on our branch router, we type in show IPv6 access list to verify the access lists that are configured on branch. And we can see that there's one IPv6 access control list and it's called outbound. Now be careful here, just because it's called outbound doesn't mean it's applied in the outbound direction, but you know it would make sense if it was. But this is just the name, it's not necessarily telling you which way it's traveling in, so be careful with that. So outbound. And what does outbound say? It says we're going to permit ICMP traffic from any source to any destination. That's it. Well, is Telnet ICMP traffic? No, it's not. Not at all. What is Telnet? Telnet is TCP traffic related to port 23. So we need that entry in this access control list. But wait a second. We have to be careful here. Am I jumping the gun? I could be. I could be jumping the gun. Why? Because we don't even know if this access control list is applied to any of the interfaces yet. We could be assuming. So let's double check now to see if any interfaces have this outbound ACL applied to it. If we look at the output of show IPv6 interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one, and to make it simple on ourselves, we're gonna pipe to just include access list, so any line that has access list within it. And we can see the result is that this particular interface has an outbound access list called outbound applied to it. So our interface right here has right on it an outbound access list. So it's controlling the traffic flowing this way. So if we go back, we'll see here that we're permitting ICMP any any, so we are allowed to ping from PC1 all the way to server, but we're not able to telnet from PC1 to the server because of that particular access control list. So how do we fix it? We're gonna add another entry to that extended IPv6 access control list. So we're gonna type an IPv6 access list outbound, because that was the name of it, outbound, and then we're gonna type in our new entry. So permit, and what are we trying to permit? TCP traffic from any source to any destination equal to 23. Now I wanna take a look at one more example here. And that example is gonna be related to an inbound access control list that's applied to gigabit ethernet zero slash one. Right now, we have an access control list applied inbound on that interface. And that access control list says permit IPv6 traffic from this particular source network going to any destination. And it's applied inbound. So that address right there, that network includes this address. So that means the server can successfully communicate in. But the problem we're having right now is that there is no communication whatsoever. We're trying to reach that server, but traffic's not coming back to us. And the reason why is because if we look at branch, branch doesn't have any OSPF routes in its routing table for that particular network. And the reason why it doesn't have any OSPF routes in that particular, uh, for that particular network is because an OSPF neighborship is not forming. Now, why would an OSPF neighborship not form? Well, we're dealing with OSPF v3 here, so for IPv6. How are OSPF v3 neighborships formed? They're formed by sending multicast packets to the FF02 double colon five multicast address. But the source of those come from where? The source come from the link local address of the device. So if we're talking about inbound on gigabit zero slash one of branch, we have those we have those multicast packets coming into the interface, but right now, if you look at the access control list, the access control list says we're only permitting 
traffic from the server's network. That's it. So since traffic's only coming or, or is only permitted from the server's network, what happens to the traffic from the link local address of HQ? It gets dropped. So since it's getting dropped, no OSPF v3 neighborship can be formed. So how do we solve this type of issue? Well, we have to make sure that the access control list is permitting, is permitting traffic sourced from FE80 inbound on that interface. So if we look at this entry here, we're gonna modify our access control list. So IPv6 access list inbound, and we're gonna say 20. 20 is the next sequence number. Well, the next sequence number would really be 11, right? If we go back, uh, this one, since it's the, f oh, pardon me. This one here, since it's the first one in our list, it'd have a sequence number of 10. And then this one here, well, it could be 11, 12, 13. If we didn't put a sequence number, it automatically goes to 20. So we can put a sequence number, just like IPv4. So we did here, 20. Permit IPv6 from FE80 double colon slash 10 going anywhere. So this link local entry, right? We're making sure that we're permitting link locally sourced packets inbound on this interface will ensure that the OSPF v3 neighborship can be formed.